microphone. <laughs> ah, that is better. Wow. I'm the last speaker at the Learning 2 conference. What an honor. Are you ready? Now, there has been a lot of amazing L2 talks here, but I do want to bring up one talk that was especially amazing, although I did take some uh, offense to. John Rinker brought up the fact that there's three things you should not leave to a robot. Sex, voting, and making coffee, which is a little bit frustrating because in the next few days, I was planning on doing all three of those. But <laughs> instead... Let me just tell you about this amazing costume as, as an alternative. Now, what this costume does is I have a flashing LED matrix here that is tied to my own heart rate. And when I talk about really boring things like extended essays and standardized test scores, it slows down. But when I talk about exciting things like SpaceX rockets and fire-breathing robots, it speeds up as my enthusiasm builds. Now, another thing that's amazing that allows me to be a walking robot DJ is it makes noises. Check this out. It's my older brother. Whenever I'm running late for a meeting, I play that to hurry myself up. And then I just have some general sound effects that can be played from time to time. I don't really know what I'm hitting here. I'm just hitting buttons. <laughs> and then one song that we all, I play for my students, we have to clean up the robot lab, which is all the time. And my students claim that they hate, but I know they love. I am the clean up robot. I am the clean up robot. Kindergarten songs being played for high school kids is fantastic. <laughs> now, this is a Halloween costume, so let's talk about Halloween. There's a shot of my brothers and I back in the day during Halloween, and I'm the one dressed as a cardboard fork. <laughs> that was my first self-designed costume, and I'm extremely proud of that one. Great, great credit to my dad for allowing me to, to work with box cutters in order to make that happen. Now, I'm less uh, proud of the fact that in the... Halloween competition that my brother and I have had since then, uh, he's defeated me in the last three years for best costume. You can see some of his winning ones right there. But I'm hoping that if this is being recorded, which I think there's a fair chance that it is, that I can drop a YouTube bomb on his head this October 31st and win the competition. Now, Halloween has been a very important and even increasingly important part of our family. There's a picture of my very pregnant wife, Jillian, on October 30th, dressed as a magic eight ball. One day after that, Geo Stegosaurus Dingrando entered the world at 1 p.m. on Halloween, and his first costume was a Subway sandwich. <laughs> this year, he will be featured as a naughty monkey, so look forward to that. Obviously, I have a passion for robotics. Uh, but also, one thing I think about passion is that the passions of a few can be the inspiration of many. And I think that when my colleagues and I got together to start the robotics program at IS Manila, our hope was that our passions would inspire kids to get into coding and making and working with electronics. And I hope in the next couple minutes I can convince you of how that is and maybe inspire you a little bit as well through this costume. Now, as a design technology teacher, I love sketches, and this started as a sketch on paper, but then quickly went to CAD, and on the software, I drew up these wooden panels, and I cut them out on the laser cutter because I really do enjoy cutting anything on a laser cutter. And then I very quickly moved on to the electronics, and this flashing matrix is powered by an Arduino microcontroller, which was featured in my extended session and is used in many of our student projects and in my classes, but then below here, the part that makes the noise, that's a touch board, and it's a beefed up Arduino that's capable of storing sound files and playing sound files, and next semester, my students are going to design an educational talking robot that they'll then present to an elementary school class, and those kids will be able to touch different parts of the robot, and the robot will say things and hopefully teach them something. 
or my students will just design a robot that plays 12 different farting noises, and it'll be the greatest robot that any of these kids have ever seen. <laughs> this costume will not just be used for learning two and my son's birthday slash Halloween. I'll also be renting myself out for children's parties, if anyone <laughs> is interested in that. But it'll also be used in November at our Invitational Robotics Tournament at IS Manila, and it'll also be used in March at our school maker fair in order to inspire kids to get into robotics and programming and making and electronics. Now I think it is inspiring many of our high school students. Here's a shot of one of our past robotics club presidents who's now at Georgia Tech University and he came back to speak to our club about the work that he was doing in robotics in university. And many of our students were inspired by hearing about the doors that are open to them because they can program and because they can actually do stuff with their hands. Now, it's not just high school boys who are being inspired by this, like you see in this picture. It's all of our students in our school, all the way down to the elementary school, boys and girls. Since 2012, we've had over 400 high school kids take a robotics class. Over 800 middle school kids have taken a robotics class. And over 1,000 elementary school kids have looked at those 1,200 older kids and thought, well, robotics is pretty cool. I'd like to be a part of that. And that brings me... <laughs> That brings me back to the fact that the passions of a few can be the inspiration of many. And I hope that the passions that we have for robotics at IS Manila uh, have inspired many students. And I hope that you have a passion and that you can use that at your school or just in life to inspire others as well. Thank you. <laughs>